this idea of bare minimum Monday, advocating for people to do the bare minimum, advocating for people to do just enough to get by. What the hell is that all about? When, when, when has doing the bare minimum actually improved someone's life? Welcome to the Zero Quit Podcast, where I bring you candid conversations with elite athletes, entrepreneurs, specialists, and other creatives. I'm your host, Brock Covington, and through these dialogues, you will hear powerful stories and practical advice that will help you live a more active and intentional life. If you enjoy the show, be sure to subscribe and share it with a friend. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Zero Quit Podcast. And today we're doing a little bit of ranting and raving because recently I saw something that uh, struck my nerve, to be honest. And, uh, you know, it's it's related to the youth and like Gen Z per se, because as much as I am Gen Z and I am young, uh, I don't always resonate with the young crowd. I'm an old soul at heart. I like 60, 70 music. I have kind of those older mannerisms or habits in some ways. And uh, so along with that, I don't really keep up with TikTok and, and what's trending sometimes, but this one idea or concept or movement came across my uh, came across my feed, came across the, the different things that I look at and take in, and it's it's called Bare Minimum Mondays, and uh, it, it's <laughs> it's kind of almost like a second iteration or third iteration of what what kind of started pre but into the pandemic with workers specifically with Gen Z, a little bit with millennials. But we've seen this come in waves with this quiet quitting trend, with the great resignation is what it's called, and now with Bare Minimum Monday. So if you've never heard of any of, heard of, any of this, let me give you a little recap. Is uh, Quiet quitting is this idea of, I hate my job, I'm not very appreciated here, I'm not getting a raise, um, workplace is quote-unquote toxic, whatever that could mean, you know, very subjective, but, you know, a term out there. And uh, basically, you don't like where you're at. So instead of actually quitting, you're going to do the least amount of work possible to keep your job until the employer fires you, basically. Uh, I, I could ramble on an, <laughs> on a podcast on that, but I'm not going to. But that's that was like one iteration. The second iteration has been this kind of pushback with, going back into the workplace, which I, I completely get. I work from home. I'm self-employed, but I have worked in actual businesses before. I've owned a business. Um, I still currently own a business in a way, although it's, you know, it, I'm the only employee in a sense, uh, but I've also owned a business that has employees. And uh, so I, I, I've seen the different facets of this, but there's this pushback of going back into the workplace because a lot of people got comfortable working from home. They liked it. They liked the flexibility, the freedom and all that. Totally get it. But at the same time, I think we can all be honest that there is a heightened sense of productivity, of responsibility, of duty when you're in the workplace. When you go to work, you get it done. Uh, you, you, you know that somebody's holding you accountable to get the things done. You're not kind of goofing off on the internet, um, killing time. You're paying attention in the meetings. You're not zoning off on a Zoom. Um, so that was another iteration, and I go too long on that. The great resignation is kind of this idea of, again, like just quitting the job that you hate and so forth. Uh, I don't know a ton about it, but I saw, I saw that was a thing. So that brings us to bare minimum Mondays. Now, what the hell is bare minimum Monday? So I'm going to read this kind of quote that from one of these articles that basically described it. So it says, much like quiet quitting, bare minimum Monday encourages employees to ease into their work week by doing just enough to get by. Rather than stress over post-weekend productivity, subscribers are encouraged to first prioritize self-care and mental health before delving into their tasks for the day. So, on the surface, sounds like a cool thing, right? You know, Mondays suck, right? You get to Sunday, this goes for school, goes for work. Get to Sunday and you're like, damn, the weekend's almost over. I got to go back into the work. The cycle repeats. And listen, you guys know I'm not a fan of a nine to five corporate, uh, you know, do what you're supposed to force yourself, you know, into a shitty job. I'm not a fan of that, that culture, that trend at all. I'm not telling you to be happy in a cubicle and live your life uh, to the demands and, and the requirements of your employer. That's not what I'm saying. But uh, I think we all get to this sense of, okay, Monday suck, but they're, they're a necessary evil. You have to go back to work. You have to go earn your living 
do your job, and so forth. So I get where this is coming from, and I also understand that, hey, mental health matters, self-care matters. Uh, we do need to, I mean, it, most of this podcast, most of what I post about is about individuality, personal freedom, personal choice, self-defining your own values and, 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 and morals and, and meaning and all of that. I'm all about individuality. However, when it comes to a business, when it comes to uh, doing the tough things that you have to do sometimes, you got to go into work. You got to go into Monday. You got to do what you're supposed to do. So, you know, this idea of bare minimum Monday, advocating for people to do the bare minimum, advocating for people to do just enough to get by. What the hell is that all about? When, when, when has doing the bare minimum actually improve someone's life? I get it if you hate your job, if you're not happy with where you're at, if you're not you know, appreciated in the way you'd like to be by your employer, but how does doing the bare minimum actually improve your position, improve your situation? You're giving up that personal agency of saying, hey, I and, and me alone can change my situation. It's absolving yourself from accountability, from self-responsibility and saying, hey, I can choose to be at this workplace or get a different job. I can choose to, you know, alter my situation, my position in life. But if your solution to being in a happy situation or a job that you don't like or a toxic, quote unquote, workplace environment, if your solution to that is just to do the bare minimum and then when you get fired or held accountable for it, say it's, you know, it's your employer's fault, I don't know what to tell you. And again, I, some people are going to say, because I, you know, I don't get it, or it's about this or about that, but uh, I'm sorry, guys, but doing the bare minimum is never going to get you anywhere in life. Like, you could have a reasonable, legitimate complaint about the workplace. Again, you can have a legitimate claim about how, you know, how we structure our work weeks, how we, uh, you know, conform ourselves to capitalism is a problem, but if your answer to fighting capitalism is just doing the bare minimum and you think that's how you're going to you know, stick it to the man and improve your life, you are sadly mistaken. Doing the bare minimum is not going to get you further in life. If anything, it's going to hold you back. And uh, it's just, I don't know, it just boggles my mind. You know? and, and it's sad because I'm part of this generation and I'm looking around and I'm seeing you know, people that grew up with the same situations that, that I have. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? You know, I mean, I've had parents that have gotten laid off from the 08 recessions. I've had uh, parents get screwed on their corporate jobs and essentially just fired because they do away with the department. You know, I've seen, uh, you know, countless people just get screwed over in their workplaces or have to force themselves to do these shitty jobs. So I, I understand. But here's, here's the other thing to consider. You don't see any uh, blue collar workers doing bare minimum Monday, do you? You don't see any uh, carpenters or construction workers saying they're going to go do the bare minimum or quiet quitting. No, because they, they, they go in, they do the job, they shut up, they do the necessary evil, and they get it done. You know, you don't see farmers out there doing the bare minimum. You know, they understand that there's a sacrifice to be made, and sometimes you have to do uncomfortable things and difficult things you don't want to do there's a means to an end and sometimes that that end is money and the means sucks sometimes you hate the means the job you have is not the job you want to have and that's okay but you have to accept that you have agency over your own life it's up to you is it easy to quit your job and go find a better job no is it easy to say, hey, I'm not making enough at this job. Instead of demanding a raise or complaining about minimum wage, I'm going to go get another job or start a business. No, that's not, that's not the easier solution. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's simple and, oh, because I did it, you can pick yourself up by bootstraps. Some people don't have bootstraps. They might not even have boots. You, you might be in a situation where like you have to keep this job. I understand. But all I'm saying is, Complaining about the job or doing the bare minimum isn't going to advance you. And, and again, I might just be you know angry dude yelling at the wind, so maybe this isn't hitting home to some people, or maybe the people that agree with me, they're getting fired up, but I just hate to see it over and over again where people like hate their job, hate their situation, and their situation is either, or their, their solution, I should say, is to just continue to complain about it 
and expect something to change or do the bare minimum and expect something to change. And sometimes, you know, the, the, the one thing to think about, too, because, you know, I've seen some of these articles talk about, you know, and I've seen a push for this for a four hour, four day work week. Right. Instead of Monday, let's just work four days. Maybe some other countries have done it. Certain businesses have done it. Why can't we do that? We should do away with the five day nine to five work week. I'm open to that. But here's the problem. What are people going to do with that extra day? Oh, well, they're going to use it to uh, practice self-care, have better mental health. Really? Are you sure? It's kind of like the idea of, you know, if we give people extra money, if we take care of their college debt, right, which is a whole other topic. But if we take care of their college debt, they're going to use that money uh, in, in a responsible manner, right? What did people do with their stimulus checks? There's data on this. People spent their stimulus checks on non-essential goods, on things they don't need, on luxuries and, and materialism and entertainment. So you think that if we give them an extra work day, they're going to actually use it productively. It's going to make them happier. It's going to alleviate the stress from their job. Won't Tuesday just become the new Monday? So you see the solution isn't just getting rid of Mondays or making Mondays easier. It's about making the hours and your life outside of work count. And if, you're, and if your life sucks that much while you're at the workplace, then you need to adjust the workplace. It might not be easy, but what's the other solution? Stay in the workplace and complain about it and hope something changes? I, I just, I, I wish people, and again, as I started off this, I'm not criticizing and, you know, just badgering people for staying in the position that they're in or, or being in the job that they're in. I'm not trying to uh, you know, demonize you for feeling upset about your position, but I do feel like waiting for someone else, government or the other person or your employer, to change your life isn't, isn't a reasonable and likely solution. The better solution is to be self-accountable, whether it's difficult or not, be self-accountable, take agency in yourself, say, hey, I'm in control of my decisions. I'm in control of, of, of what I have to do, the work I have to do, and so forth, of the situation I'm in. And say, if I want these things to change, it's on me. Because the other option is, well, your life isn't up to you. So whether my solution is more difficult at least it says, hey, it's on me. I can do this. I can change the situation. It is in my hands. Because if it's not in your hands, then, you know, you're just waiting. You're just hoping for the universe to work out. So I'm getting off on a tangent a little bit, so I think this is a good place to end it. <laughs> but uh, to wrap things up, bare minimum Mondays, doing the bare minimum, quiet quitting, acting as if, doing the least amount possible is going to save your life or save your mental health or, or, or relieve some stress it's just, or, or further you in life. It's just not a reality. I understand that hustle culture, this grind, grind, grind mindset, it doesn't always lead to something. It doesn't always lead to happiness. It doesn't always lead to you getting a promotion. You don't always get recognized. You don't always get appreciated by the employer. Corporate jobs, business owners, businesses, they will screw you time and time again. I understand it. I've seen it. I've felt it. My, my family has felt it. But continuing to just complain or do the bare minimum is not going to get you any further. Working harder doing the difficult thing, taking the risk. It doesn't guarantee you success, but at least it gives you ownership of that decision. It gives you opportunity for change. If you stay in the same situation and just make it more miserable for yourself, you can't really expect things to change. So anyway, I'd really love to hear your guys' thoughts. Uh, maybe I'm all wrong about this. Maybe I'm not understanding uh, the mindset or the attitude because I'm not currently in that situation or workplace. Uh, so let me know, let me know, even if, even if I pissed you off <laughs> or if you agree, whatever it is, uh, let me know in a direct message and email, whatever it is, comment, 
wherever you're listening to this, let me know. Uh, please share this podcast. Uh, I'll have some more great guest episodes very, very soon, so look out for it. If you did uh, check out some recent podcasts, I had some great, a really great conversation, thoughtful conversation with Matt Vincent. Um, we talked about a wide variety of things. Um, also had a great one with Dr. Jeff Donatello, a bunch of great ones recently, so make sure you check those, get those episodes out if you haven't already. Appreciate all the support, guys. Really do, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.